Okay, Jaws, it's good to have you back home again after summer school at Dog Warts, but the viewers have been asking for an epic video. You got any ideas, mate? <laughs> Absolutely not. We are not faceting the philosopher's bone. You've been yapping on about that for years, ever since you were a puppy at Dog Warts. And besides, I spend a fortune on dog warts and you come back with this ridiculous laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you want me to call you Harry Poodle. Can you take those glasses off? Okay, I'll try to meet you halfway. A lot of viewers have asked whether I could facet the Philosopher's Stone. Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and a warm welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. A big hello to all my regular subscribers and viewers and if you've happened to stumble across this channel for the first time, allow me to extend a personal invitation into the world of how gemstones are cut. I think you're going to really enjoy this video, this is a fun video. A lot of people have asked me whether I could facet the Philosopher's Stone. Before I start faceting the mythical Philosopher's Stone, some of you are probably wondering what type of gem material I'm holding at the moment, and also, in the opening credits, who the heck is this dog called Jaws? To answer the first question, I'm currently holding Cubic Zirconia, which is a man-made synthetic gem material. As to the second question, let me introduce you to Jaws. Jaws is a trusty friend and valued family member and is often featured in the Vintage Time videos. Sometimes Jaws does a bit of camera work, video editing and removal of trolls. So with the magic of video technology, I've already completed the preform and what the preform is, it's just a basic shape of the gem you'll be cutting. I made this preform at my gem club and the reason being is that large pieces of cubic zirconia can really wear out the diamond laps on your fastening machine and also it saves a lot of time using larger industrial machines. So what is this mythical stone that I'll be faceting in this video? The Philosopher's Stone was a legendary alchemical substance with magical properties. This ruby red stone could be used to create the elixir of life which made the drinker immortal as well as transform any metal into pure gold. The only known stone to ever have existed was created by the famed alchemist Nicholas Flamel. Before the faceting commences, there's a little bit of preparation that needs to be done. First I need to glue a brass stop stick to the preformed gem. I'm using a two-part epoxy glue and make sure you use a good quality two-part epoxy glue. I'm using Devcon because you really want the brass stop stick to attach firmly to the gem. My preference is to place plenty of glue underneath the dop stick then lock in the dop stick into place and then glue around the dop stick. This in my opinion minimizes any chances of the gem tearing away from the dop stick while faceting. I try to use plenty of glue around the dop and on the surface of the gem and this once again minimizes mistakes. So it's for following day now and the glue is fully dried and we have a strong attachment with the dop stick on the gem. Thank you. 
So now with the gem on the dop stick, we insert it into the quill of the fastening machine and then we tighten up a little nut on the side with an Allen key and we're all set to go. Actually, before we go any further, I better drop in the design. This is the design that I'll be cutting the Philosopher's Stone in and I accidentally came up with this design some time ago. It's hard to imagine what the Philosopher's Stone would look like but I always imagined it once faceted it would be a round type of gem. I'd also like to thank a gentleman called Tony, he's in my faceting group. I sent him all the protractor angles and the index numbers and he ran this through Gem Cut Studio and he sent me the PDF file. Gem Cut Studio also seems to have the capability of creating a computer generated three dimensional GIF of what the gem will look like once completed and Tony sent this to me also. Anyway let's get back to continuing setting up. The next step for me is to use a 100 grit disc. I need to remove a lot of material because this is actually quite a large gem and cubic zirconia is a very hard material of a Mohs of 8.5 on the hardness scale. If I was to use a very fine grey disc not only would it wear out the disc in no time at all but it would take forever and a day to get the gem faceted so I want to be removing lots of material quick and then I can move on to my finer grade discs. So the first step I'm going to do is round out the gem most preforms aren't perfectly round and the dop stick won't be perfectly centered. So I've got the protractor set at 90 degrees and I've got the index wheel free spinning and this will determine the size of the gem. So the gem has been rounded out on a 100 grit disc and the next step will be that I'll be faceting the first set of pavilion facets. I have the protractor angle set at 45 degrees. I'll be cutting 16 pavilion facets. This will be the first set on the pavilion and these facets will look fairly rough because I'm using a 100 grit disc. I've cut my first facet to depth, removing quite a bit of material and then I'll cut the other 15 facets also to depth. And here you can see now that I've cut the 15 facets and it's looking pretty rough. It's looking like an ugly duckling but hopefully this gem will turn into a beautiful swan. So I've changed out the discs and used a 240 grit disc and you can see that the facets are a lot cleaner and then I'll move on to an 800 grit disc. Once the first set of pavilion facets have been cut, the next step is to cut the girdle outline. I'm using a fairly fine grit disc. I'm using my 1200 again because I don't really need to cut a lot of material away. So on to cutting the girdle facets. To cut the girdle facets, you have to protract the angle set at 90 degrees and you're cutting the same indexes as you did with the first set of pavilion facets.
in the following scenes you'll see that I've cut the girdle facets and then the next step will be to polish them. Today I'll be testing out a new polishing disc. This is a zinc lap. I actually bought these very cheap off eBay from China and they were listed as jade polishing laps and I've been wanting to try these and they were only $50 Australian with postage so I actually bought two of them. The thing is with these white metal laps they're usually very expensive. In Australia they can cost $200 or more and the problem is you need two of them, one for a pre-polish and one for a final polish. So when you're doing a pre-polish as I'm doing now, I'm using an 8000 grit diamond compound with sewing machine oil and then you'll move on to the final polish and you don't want to get these laps contaminated by using different compounds. So I'll see how I go with the 8000 and then I'll try the 50000 diamond compound on my other lap. So the 8000 grit diamond compound on the zinc lap has done a pretty good job for the pre-polish on the girdle outline. And the thing is, the reason why I bought this zinc lap is specifically to be used on these synthetic gems. Because I found in the past with these large gems, particularly on tin, they can really wear the tin down because tin is a lot softer than zinc. And tin laps are generally very expensive, so I thought zinc would be a better option. In this scene here I've used the 50,000 diamond compound on another zinc lap and it seems to be working quite well. A little bit slower but the pre-polish is very fast compared to the final polish. So in point of fact I'll probably be doing a lot of pre-polishing on zinc with these synthetic gems. So I'm ready to start faceting the second set of pavilion facets and I've set the protractor angle at 43 degrees and I'll cut 8 pavilion facets starting with an 800 grit disc and then I'll move on to the 1200 grit disc and almost cut up to the girdle line. So the first set of 16 facets on the pavilion have been split and here you can see I've cut these facets with an 800 grit disc and in the next scene I'm using a 1200 grit disc and almost cutting right down to the girdle. I need to say that this pavilion really is the same as a standard round brilliant design. It's actually the crown of this particular gem. In my opinion looks very different than most other crowns. However, you never know, someone else might have done the same design. All I can say is that it looks so different than what I've seen around before. So I've been doing a little bit of experimentation and I've changed things up with my zinc laps. I've given both of them a really good clean and I've decided to use a 14,000 grit diamond compound out of one of these syringe tubes and I'm finding that it's far more effective than the 8,000 grit diamond compound pre-polish. So I'll be using this on this lap from now on and later on you'll notice that I'm using also a finer grade diamond compound to do the final polish. I've also sped up the speed of my laps and this has helped a lot. So here I'm going to be using the 100,000 grit diamond compound and running the speed of the lap really fast because normally I run them a lot slower but uh, this is a totally different lap than a tin lap. So on to doing a final polish on the pavilion facets.
So using these different diamond compounds and speeding up the lap, in my opinion, has done a really good job on both the pre-polish and the final polish. So the pavilion facets are completely polished, which means the next step in the process will be to facet the crown. So things are clearly heating up. We're on to the secondary transfer now. I've glued another dop stick onto the gem and the original dop stick needs to be removed by heating it off. When I remove the original dop by heat, I like to hold the gem in my hands. This way I can feel any heat transfer coming along the dop stick I'm removing. The last thing you want is any heat to get into the gem and transfer to the other side that is holding the dop on. If this occurs, most likely there will be slight movement in the dop which causes inaccuracy. I find that even holding a wet cloth around the gem does not stop heat transferal going through the gem onto the other side where the dop is. If you're using a quality glue, you usually have excess glue left on the gem after removing the dop and then you trim it away with a heated scalpel. If the dot pops off too easily with minimal heat, that is a sign that the glue is just poor quality. So fastening the crown is similar to the pavilion. I'll be using a 100 grit disc as I'm placing it on now. Then I'll put the dot into the quill. I'll lock that in. I'll have the protractor set at 47 degrees. I'll be faceting the first set of crown facets, 16 of them. Here's a little tip particularly when you're fastening larger gems, make sure you've got plenty of clearance around the spindle before you turn on the machine and that disc is running. The last thing you want to happen when you're fastening is chipping your gem because you've bumped it into the spindle. And believe me, a lot of people do this. It's actually never happened to me because I always prepare myself fairly properly before I start cutting. So it's all these little things in preparation that will make you a really good faceter. At the moment I've got quite a lot of material to grind away and that's why I'm using a 100 grit disc. I don't use any depth gauges, I use my eyes and my ears. At this point my ears are my greatest tool because I can hear when the grinding process has finished and then I'll keep lowering the height adjuster. Your ears will be one of the best tools you can have when you're faceting. At this stage I've ground quite a bit of material away using the 100 grit diamond disc. Then I'll transfer to a 240 grit disc and an 800 and a 1200 grit diamond disc. By doing this I'm going to minimise any risk of any chipping as I get closer to the girdle outline. Well, that was quite handy having Jaws turn on the fastening machine for me.
Now I'm ready to cut the second set of crown facets at 42 degrees. So the second set of crown facets have now been cut. Then I'll have to cut the third set of crown facets at 30 degrees and then cut the table. So the third set of the crown facets are now complete. So the next step is that I need to facet the table. So I'm going to lower the table a little bit more than in the diagram because I want the third set of crown facets to be of similar height to the second set and first set. So it's just a little bit of tweaking compared to the diagram. And also the girdle facets are a little bit thinner than what the diagram shows also. So the table has now been faceted, the next step will be to polish the table and then I'll polish all the facets from the girdle all the way back to the table. I won't show the steps of polishing because it's exactly the same as when I polish the pavilion. In the following scenes you'll see all the stages of where the crown has been polished and this means once again we are getting closer to the end of another video. I would like to thank my little buddy and personal assistant called Jaws. Now Jaws has had this laughing spell cast upon him by Professor Snout at Dogwarts and ever since then he's never been able to stop laughing. But nonetheless Jaws is a very important part of some of these vintage time videos. I would also like to thank my subscribers and all those people who watch my videos and leave comments. I do actually read all the comments and try to answer quite a few questions that people leave. So if you're new to faceting or you want to learn faceting, just leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. As to all my subscribers and those people who requested that I facet the Philosopher's Stone, I hope I did a good job. I really did try to do my best. I may even sell this gem to a fan of the Philosopher's Stone or a subscriber or a fan of my channel just mainly to cover the cost of materials and to buy new gems to facet for future videos. Anyway I would like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this video. I had a lot of fun making it with the special effects and cutting this particular gem. And don't forget to watch the final reveal where you see this gem in all its glory. So until next time everybody, take care.